<laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Paul, the Canadian Snowman. I'm back here with some more Napoleon. This is it, guys. This is the last of Napoleon. Oh, uh, obviously, we're going to go on, see what happened, you know, with the marshals and stuff like that. But as far as Napoleon, this is it, the last episode. Man. It, honestly, it feels like forever ago when we started this series. And now, this is it. Like, it feels like forever ago, but it also feels like just yesterday, you know. He had his first battle, and he proved himself, and then, you know, and then he just made his, you know, just continued on. But uh, this is the last one, Battle of Waterloo. Um, I, was, I was completely surprised last episode. Uh, if this is your first video watching, you should definitely go and watch the previous. Uh, I, will, I do all the Napoleonic War videos, and you should definitely check those out. But I was surprised, but he got sent to the island, but he comes back off the island, because he wants, I guess, to regrain his throne or whatever. Like he wants to come back. He's not sitting still. He's not. In re he's not retiring. He wants to come back. And uh, Battle of War. I'm excited. Like how how does this play out? I like, well, before, well, I guess we're just gonna go ahead and find and see. So let's go ahead and jump into it. But I also like to thank everyone for watching along with me uh, for these past you know like past month through all these videos. I really appreciate it. All right, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, and, yeah, let's continue on it together and let's do it. Uh, if you haven't yet, though, please hit the like and subscribe, guys. Please and thank you. And let's do it, guys. Let's do it. Dun, dun. If you haven't yet, definitely check out Epic History TV's channel. It's awesome. I have amazing videos. I've done the Crusades. I've done Alexander the Great. Definitely check those videos, videos out too. But awesome channel. I've been watching awesome channel. Oh, Waterloo. April 1814. For 10 years, one man has dominated Europe. Napoleon Bonaparte, Emperor of the French. Under his military genius, France conquered an empire that spanned the continent. But finally, he has been defeated by a grand coalition of his enemies. Napoleon is forced to abdicate and exiled to the tiny island of Elba. While the Bourbon monarchy is restored to France in the corpulent form of Louis XVIII. Hmm. But rumors soon reach Napoleon that France would welcome his return. The French oh, yeah? people have little love for the monarchy or its hangers-on, the very people whose excesses led to the French Revolution 25 years before. He also learns that at the Congress of Vienna, his enemies are locked in bitter dispute over the future of Europe. Napoleon decides to act. Now or never? After just 10 months in exile, he returns to France, where the troops sent to arrest him rally to his cause instead. That's awesome. Most of France soon follows suit. But in Vienna... That didn't seem to take long. Like, he returns and the guy is sent to arrest and was like, welcome back, welcome back. We're going to arrest you. We're going to join your side. Starting out pretty awesome for Napoleon. Wow. I mean, welcome back to open arms. But what's going on over here? Most of France soon follows suit. But in Vienna, the coalition immediately put their differences to one side. They declare <laughs> Napoleon an outlaw and mobilize their forces for war. Uh oh. Napoleon knows he must act boldly before the coalition launches a coordinated invasion of France. Mm -hmm. He counts on winning a quick victory and then negotiating peace from a position of strength. He targets the coalition yeah. armies within easiest reach. Prince Blücher's Prussian army and the Duke of Wellington's Anglo-Allied yeah. army, both camped in Belgium. Napoleon's force is a match for either coalition army on its own, but he'll be heavily outnumbered if they're able to join forces. So he must keep mm. them apart and defeat each in turn. 
Damn. It's kind of crazy. It basically takes off right where he left off like a year later. And it's like almost like like he never got kicked off. Y'all, it's kind of funny. <laughs> oh man. All right. What are we going on? Here we go. Napoleon's army crosses the frontier near Charleroi, intending to drive a wedge between the two coalition armies. The next day, Napoleon sends his left wing under Marshal Ney to take the crossroads at Quatre Bras. There, Ney clashes with Wellington's army, still scrambling into position. Yeah. The Allied troops fight off a series of French attacks and just manage to hold their ground. The same day, Napoleon attacks Blücher's Prussian army with his main force near the village of Ligny. The battle is a brutal slugging match, but the French emerge triumphant. The 72-year-old Blücher leads a cavalry charge in person and has his horse killed under him. Damn. He only just escapes capture. The Prussian army retreats, but it is not broken. Napoleon sends his right wing under Marshal Grouchy to keep them on the run and turns his own attention to Wellington's army. The British general doesn't receive news of Blücher's defeat until the next morning, at which point he orders a retreat through heavy summer showers to a position eight miles south of Brussels, near the okay. village of Waterloo. Pushing back. There, he receives a promise from Blücher that the Prussians will march to his aid the next morning. So Wellington decides to stand and fight. Wellington has chosen his battlefield with care. His troops are behind a gentle ridge, which will give them some shelter from French cannon fire. See, I, I know Wellington is a smart guy and like a great you know, commander in his own right, so... This is this is kind of cool. It's kind of like the Clash of the Titans, you know. So let's check this out. I mean, it has, how does this play out? Troops are behind a gentle ridge, which will give them some shelter from French cannon fire. His right flank is anchored on the farmhouse of Hougoumont, his center on the farm of La Haye Sainte, and his left on the farm of Papillotte. All three are fortified and garrisoned with elite troops. Wellington's men need every advantage they can get. The opposing armies are roughly equal in size, but his is a ragtag mix of British, Dutch, and German troops, Damn. many of whom have never seen combat before. They will have to hold off Napoleon's army of veterans until Prussian reinforcements arrive, or the battle, and probably the war, will be lost. And here we go. Oh no. What's that gonna be? Send the 18th June, 1815, Waterloo. Let's do it. Sunday dawns bright and fair. Napoleon has ordered Marshal Grouchy to pursue the Prussians and keep them busy while he defeats Wellington's army at Waterloo and opens the road to Brussels. But it's Grouchy who gets pinned down, fighting the Prussian rearguard at Wavre. The main Prussian force eludes him and is already marching to Wellington's aid. At Waterloo, Wait. Napoleon delays his attack, waiting for the ground to dry, which will make movement easier for his troops. But the lost hours will later prove costly. The battle begins around 11 a.m. when Napoleon orders a feint against Wellington's right flank at Hougoumont. He hopes Wellington will commit his reserves here, drawing them away from the center where the main blow will fall. 
but Hougoumont's British and German defenders cling on desperately throughout the day. At one point, the French force their way through the main gate, but it's shut behind them. Damn. The intruders are all killed. Damn. Wellington later calls it the decisive moment of the battle. Around noon, 80 French cannon open fire against the main Allied line. Most of Wellington's men are out of sight on the reverse slope, but many cannonballs still find their mark, smashing bloody holes in the Allied ranks. At 1.30 p.m., Napoleon sends in his infantry. The French columns are met by disciplined musket fire and then charged by British heavy cavalry. Damn. Massacring them? The French attack disintegrates as Napoleon's men try to save themselves from the crushing hooves and flashing sabers. Damn. Scores of Frenchmen are ridden down, and two of their famous eagle standards are captured. Wow. But the British cavalry, exhilarated by success, charge too far. Uh -oh. They become scattered, their horses blown. At their most vulnerable, they're countercharged by French cavalry and suffer terrible losses. There you go. Among the dead, Major General Sir William Ponsonby, commander of the Union Brigade. Around 4 p.m., Marshal Ney thinks he sees the Allies begin to retreat and leads a mass cavalry charge to drive home the advantage. But Ney is wrong. Oh, damn. The infantry are ready formed in hollow squares with bayonets fixed. The French cavalry can't break into these impregnable formations. They can only circle impotently until they retreat or are shot from the saddle. Ney's failure to support this attack with either infantry or artillery is a serious blunder. Meanwhile, Blücher's Prussians have begun to arrive. They capture the village of Plancenoit, threatening Napoleon's flank and forcing him to send reserves. Seems like, you know, they're almost surrounded, but... And Napoleon can't afford his little blunders here. You know, like that cavalry charge probably cost him some good horses and men. He just can't afford to do that. Oh, wow. Big mistake. What's going to happen here? Plancenoit threatening Napoleon's flank and forcing him to send reserves to recapture it. Around 6 p.m., French infantry finally capture the farmhouse of La Haye-Sainte in the center of the battlefield. It allows the French to bring forward artillery and blast the Allied squares from close range. Oh, they can't miss the closely packed formations and casualties quickly mount. It begins to seem that if Wellington's army doesn't retreat, it will be killed where it stands. One down, I should retreat. But the situation for Napoleon is also desperate. The Prussians are arriving in force, and he's running out of men to throw against Wellington's army. So he turns to his ultimate reserve, the elite Imperial Guard the most feared troops in Europe. At 7.30 p.m., 3,000 of these battle-hardened veterans march past their emperor and across the corpse-strewn battlefield towards the Allied center. Wellington's redcoats rise to meet them and pour devastating volleys of musket fire into their ranks. When the Allies fix bayonets and prepare to charge, the Imperial Guard wavers and then retreats. What? Not the Imperial Guard. Wellington, sensing victory, orders a general advance. Oh, man. About the same time, the Prussians recapture Plans Noir. You gotta give well Wellington props, man. He stood his ground. Like, he wasn't running or he wasn't running. He stood on the Napoleon. And he's pushing him back right now. I don't know how it's going to finish out here, but, you know, give him props. About the same time, the Prussians recapture Plans Noir. 
News of the Imperial Guard's defeat and rumors of encirclement by the Prussians sweep through the French ranks. Panic breaks out, and the French army flees the battlefield. Only Napoleon's old guard maintain their discipline, mounting a heroic but doomed rearguard action. Napoleon himself yeah. is forced to abandon his carriage and barely escapes the pursuing Prussian cavalry. The battle is won. Hey, I like that. The Duke wow. of Wellington and Prince Blücher meet and congratulate each other outside Napoleon's former headquarters, an inn called La Belle Alliance. Blücher thinks it's the perfect name for their shared victory, but Wellington prefers the more English-sounding Waterloo, where he has his own headquarters. The Battle of Waterloo was, in the words of the Duke of Wellington, a damned near-run thing. It was also one of the bloodiest battles of the age. Around 50,000 men were killed or wounded, 23,000 coalition casualties, 27,000 French. Due to an appalling shortage of medical care, many of the wounded were left lying on the battlefield for several days. That's crazy. Napoleon was utterly defeated. Unable to raise another. Like, dang it, like, Napoleon had to win that. And then, you know, Wellington and the Prussians, they had to stop him because then they didn't want Napoleon to get that momentum going again. So each side was, you know, because New Wellington wasn't giving up. They were pushing forward. They were not retreating. And Napoleon definitely wasn't retreating. He brought in his guard because... It's, this was it, you know, and that was kind of his last resort. And it didn't work, and they just had to, they had to, you know, everybody had to split. They had to get their butts out of there. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. Napoleon was utterly defeated. Unable to raise another army, he surrendered to the British. They transported him to a second Epics. exile on the tiny, remote Atlantic island of St. Helena. This time wow. there was no escape. He died there six years later. Man, if they were saying to no island right nearby where this can happen again, they're like, no point, you're lucky to still be alive, that we're not going to execute you. We're just going to send you to the other side of the world. <laughs> So we don't have to worry about any kind of uprising or you returning. Yeah, <laughs> damn. We die, you know, he died in his bed, you know. He didn't, I mean, like I said, like I've said before, there's not many of these uh, amazing leaders die in battle. You know, they kind of usually die of natural causes or sickness or something. But anyways, uh, yeah, I mean, he survived though he got sent away but at least he survived he gave he gave it all he, all he had gave it a shot and he didn't he came up just a little bit short man but the stuff he's done the stuff he's done waterloo marked the beginning of a period of relative peace in europe hmm. there were no wars between the great powers for 40 years and the british would not fight on the continent for another hundred years Oh, wow. Until the summer of 1914. Mm. I've always loved sci-fi. And the idea of being like I wonder the why. Discovery and... 40 years after the battle, a pioneer in the new art of photography captured these remarkable images. They're veterans of Napoleon's armies, by then, all old men in their 70s and 80s. Among them, Sergeant Tanya of the Imperial Guard, Moray of the 2nd Regiment of Hussars, and Verlin of the 2nd Guard Lancers. These faces are a tantalizing link to the dramatic events that shaped the course of history two centuries ago.
well done. This series, man, well done. Photography, you know, you get a glimpse of what, you know, Napoleon's, you know, leaders uh, looked like and everything. And too bad, you know, there was no cameras back like that. Kind of get a shot in Napoleon. Everything's kind of like by painting. But great series. Awesome that we kind of got one last battle to kind of finish it off. That, you know, the series ended with an awesome battle. I mean, the series with Napoleon. I'm going to continue on with Marshalls and all that stuff. But uh, definitely a great series. Uh, very well done. Epic History TV always coming out on top with these uh, amazing uh, videos. Props to them. Um, thank you guys uh, for watching these along with me. Uh, learned a lot. And like I can't believe I didn't like know a lot more about this, you know, previously. So it's cool to learn this and kind of be surprised by everything and not know, not really be spoiled about what was to come. And it kind of like a show, you know, what's, what's going to happen next. So that was kind of really cool about this whole thing and everything. So, uh, again, once again, thank you guys for watching. Uh, once again, if you haven't uh, subscribed or liked this video yet, please do. And uh, we'll uh, catch you guys in future videos. You know, we'll see what goes on next. What you know, what the uh, what there what there is to hold for the marshals. Like, uh, you know, what do they become? I'm assuming I'm assuming that that this is what the marshals uh, is going to be about. Like, you know, what happened after you left the army. I'm assuming that's what it is. So, I guess we'll have to wait and see. But anyway, you guys, once again, thank you for watching. I've had a lot of fun. And uh, I'll just definitely catch you guys in uh, future videos. This has been great. Peace.